Welcome. So if you need Spanish interpretation, please click on the globe and it will take you to the Spanish um, translation um, session of this of this uh, training. So si necesitan interpretación en español, hagan clic en el globo y escogen español. Um, and then you will get reciben ayuda con español there. So thank you so much uh, for being here. We are recording this meeting. So if you would like to be um, off camera, that is fine, but we will be sending the recording out to our site as well as our parent liaison so that they have reference um, of all of the information that we're going to cover today. Um, Ruby Martinez and Ruby Garcia are assisting me tonight. Thank you so much for being here. And um, Ruby Martinez is placing the link to the slideshow in the chat. So everybody has um, the English and Spanish version is being put in the chat. So um, you've got that as well. Ruby Martinez, can you share your screen? Or is Ruby Garcia sharing her screen? Thank you. Okay. All right, so we're going to get started. Uh, my name is Janice Jones. I'm the Director of Multilingual Programs and State and Federal Accountability. And um, prior to being a director, I was a longtime high school English teacher and ELD teacher for, for many, many, many years. And then I went into administration at the high school level and was a high school principal and ended up here um, supporting all of our sites and working with our wonderful administrators at the, at the site level on um, specifically what we're gonna talk about tonight, making sure that we are fostering an environment where our biliterate and multiliterate students are celebrated and recognized. So tonight is our biliteracy pathways informational meeting for parents and site personnel. And let's go to the next slide. And what the objectives tonight really are to talk through the different pathways that our different grade spans have to be recognized by the district and by the state for their biliteracy. So um, we will end our session tonight with a video that will show you um, different videos of students who have participated in these pathways um, and culminated as seniors with the seal of um, biliteracy from the state. So the first pathway that is available to our students um, is the biliteracy program participation recognition. This is available to all students in grades K through five who attend our dual language academy and any student throughout the district in grade eight that is enrolled in a Spanish course because that student is also developing their um, by literacy, by learning a second language or a, or a language other than English. So this is available to any student who is in those programs because they are leading to by literacy. And this includes preschool, kindergarten, elementary, and middle school. This award is provided to all students enrolled in the program and is not based on proficiency. This is a participation recognition for students who are um, really trying to learn a language other than their home language. This would also be um, students at the Dual Language Academy that are learning English. They may be newcomers and they're in grades K through five, but they're at the Dual Language Academy learning a second language, which would be English. We would identify these students by what we call a query in our student information system, ARIES, and we would pull the names and the rosters of all of the students at every middle school who's enrolled in a Spanish course, and every student at our dual language academy in, K, in uh, TK through five actually. And these students would receive a recognition certificate from my department as well as the state for their participation. That's the first pathway. Let's look at the second pathway. So the second pathway is the home language development recognition. This is open to any student, regardless of grade um, or program, any student who um, speaks a home language other than English. And this recognition is provided to students who demonstrate that they are continuing to develop, develop their home language by engaging in any activities in the home language away from school. 
So it could be, um, this could be a student who speaks Spanish at home, um, doesn't speak Spanish at school so much, but speaks Spanish at home and they are um, interacting with family members on a regular basis in their home language. That would be an age appropriate activity. And as long as the um, parent um, certifies that the student is speaking their home language at home and engaging in activities with that language, that would be fine. Um, other activities could be um, working within their church or their community center or tutoring kids in the second language or um, volunteering um, at, a, at a center for, I don't know, anybody who would speak that home language. It could be cultural activities. It could be um, language courses that they're actually taking to learn their home language. So this is a very, um, I don't wanna say easy, but it's a very beneficial way for students who are not enrolled in any special program um, to just celebrate the fact that they're learning or they're keeping their home language. This would be open to our newcomer students of any grade because our newcomer students, they are keeping their home language alive as they come to us to learn English and they're also learning English. So um, they would also receive this recognition. This is open to all students, English learners, um, initial fluent English proficient students, um, reclassified students, English only students who actually have a home language, but they were never identified as English learners. And the way that we find out how many kids get this recognition is that we are going to be emailing a survey to all parents to verify that a student is engaging in age appropriate activities in the home language. And it's going to be a very quick survey. Last year, we did it through the LCAP parent survey. This year, we are going to do a separate survey that we will send out to every parent so that they can verify that their student is um, keeping their home language alive. Um, and then we would run another query or another report from our ARI system to identify the families that responded to the survey. And those students would receive the home language development recognition from Hemet Unified. So that's the second pathway um, to biliteracy recognition award that we have here at Hemet Unified. Let's go to the third one. The biliteracy attainment recognition, this is a little bit more difficult. So let's review the very first um, recognition is for students who participate in a program in grades K through five and eight. And then the home language survey is for students that are developing or continuing to develop their home language, language at home. This third one is actually um, a recognition where students have to pass an exam in the um, second language or in the other language other than English to give evidence of approaching fluency in that other language. So this is available to, the stu to all students at the end of elementary school. And the grade level depends on the program. Here it would be grade five, grades five and grades eight. This recognition is based on proficiency and is awarded to students who meet specifically profic specific profici proficiency criteria in English and the other language. This recognition is aligned to the state seal of biliteracy requirements that students work towards in high school and is an indication if a, that if a student continues along this path, they will be prepared to meet the requirements to earn the state seal of biliteracy. So at this point, I'm gonna go over the requirements to attain the biliteracy attainment recognition. Let's go to the next slide. So this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. In order to receive the biliteracy attainment recognition in fifth or eighth grade, students must provide evidence of proficiency in English and a world language. The way that they um, provide evidence of English proficiency is in one of the following ways, only one. CASP proficiency in grades three or four, if they're in fifth grade, and the CASP is the state test, the SBAC test. 
So SBAC proficiency in grades three or four in English, or a winter MAP score of grade level proficiency, or an LPAC four at any time between TK and grade five, or if they've had any LPAC growth between fourth and fifth grade. If, if a student meets any one of those criteria, they have met the English proficiency criteria for grade five. In addition to the student who meets one of this, one of these criteria, if they score an overall of a three on a test called Avant, which is a test that we provide for students in the language that they are targeting, they receive this attainment recognition. So once the administrator at the school site identifies the students who meet one of those criterion for English proficiency, they would bring those students in and they would assess the students on the home language or the language that they are learning. Um, it could be Spanish, it could be Korean, it could be Arabic, it could be any um, language that that student is developing other than English. I had the opportunity to test at Harmony, Harmony Elementary last year um, for our fifth grade students. And the students were extremely excited and proud to be able to assess in their home language um, after they had already reached their English proficiency. And they did a great job. It was at the end of the year last year. And even though there was a lot of testing, this was one test that those students really wanted to take and do well on. So that's fifth grade. Eighth grade is similar except it's a little bit harder for them to gain the um, language other than English proficiency. So in eighth grade, a student has to have, in order to get the biliteracy attainment recognition, they needed to have in their eighth grade year have a nearly met on the SBAC. Now, some of you might be asking, but the SBAC isn't given until eighth grade. That is true. It is given in April of eighth grade and um, we get those score reports back in early summer for students. Um, and so these students would not know that they attained this until the beginning of ninth grade. Um, but our middle school um, administrators can also qualify them for this particular English proficiency to see if they're getting a 2.0 or above in their ELA grade uh, classrooms. If they have an LPAC score of a four in their sixth, seventh or eighth grade, or if they have LPAC growth between sixth, seventh or eighth by one level. So in eighth grade, um, it's a little bit different. They have to show English proficiency in one of these ways. Most of our students, most of our administrators at the middle school will, um, give evidence with the GPA, because that's something that they have right away at the end of the school year, and um, they don't have to wait for those test scores until summer. And then of course, they have to take that Avant test, which is a language test, um, and they would score an overall of a four. I had the opportunity to help out Diamond Valley last year with the testing, and it was a great experience as well. Um, the students are very well equipped to take um, electronic tests, and they were very proud again to assess themselves in their home language or in the language other than English that they were learning. Okay, let's go on to the next. We'll have time for questions at the end of the presentation, but let's go on to the next one. All of these pathways are building up so that in the 12th grade year, students qualify for the state seal of biliteracy. And this is a seal that goes on their diploma. Um, they get an orange cord to wear with their sash at graduation. They are um, recognized at their senior honors night. And it is something that they can put on their college applications, on any job applications. Um, but they, they are definitely some, it is definitely something that um, we want to, uh, start talking about as early as ninth grade. And if students have already been familiar with the Hemet Unified by Literacy Pathways, by the time they get to ninth grade, they know that they are already on the path to get this state seal of biliteracy. The requirements to receive the state seal of biliteracy as a senior 
are pretty stringent. They're pretty hard, but these kids are already used to giving evidence of their language acquisition. Um, so these are the qualifications for the state seal of biliteracy. Um, and by the way, I wanted to go back to something I said. Um, students will often be, well, students will be filling out a lot of applications for college and everything early in the year, and they will not know if they will have had the state seal of biliteracy by the time they're starting to fill out their applications. However, they can put on their applications um, a candidate to receive the state seal of biliteracy or on track to receive state seal of biliteracy at that point. So these are the qualifications. Completion of all English language arts requirements for graduation with an overall GPA of 2.0. Um, they have to pass the uh, SVAC or California State um, Performance and Progress Assessment for ELA that has been administered in grade 11 at or above standard MET. They have to show proficiency in one or more language other than English demonstrated through one of the following methods, either an AP test in like Spanish or French or another language, with a score of three or higher or an IB score of a score of four or more. Successful completion of a four-year high school score, course of study in world languages with GPA of 3.0 or higher if they did not pass the AP exam or a passage of a district test with a score of proficient or higher demonstrating proficiency in all modes of communication. That is what we call the Avant test. And I just talked about that when I talked about the fifth and eighth graders. The SAT two is no longer being offered, but if they have an existing score somewhere in their history of a 600 or higher, you can use that. And then EL students with an LPAC overall four, um, they demonstrate English proficiency. They have to have that extra layer of English proficiency to qualify for this. So um, we're gonna go into a little bit more detail with the state seal. So let's go to the next slide. And let's go to even the next slide. I'll come back to the RCOE seal. So um, for the state seal of, of, of biliteracy, um, it's important that you get in touch with your school, with your high school seniors counselor um, they are the ones that are working with my department to make sure that they are identifying as many students in the 12th grade year as possible that might qualify for the state seal. So um, there's a lot of activity around this particular process starting in February and going until the end of the year. But your high school counselor, your college and career counselor is the person that at the high school you want to get in touch with about the state seal of biliteracy. Below, the state seal of biliteracy on this chart, you will see something that's called the RCOE seal of multiliteracy. And we are in the middle of that process right now. Any student senior who qualifies for the Riverside County Office of Education seal of multiliteracy automatically qualifies for the state seal. And they no longer need to assess in the spring on any kind of test to receive the state seal. They have already received it by virtue of, of passing all the requirements for the Riverside County Seal of Multiliteracy. Let's look at those requirements. Ruby, you want to go back one? So the Riverside County Seal of Multiliteracy is a process by which, again, a high school senior will um, give evidence of being proficient in both English and a language other than English, okay? So the application for this process already passed, that was September 8th, but we had a lot of students from different high schools participate. And then they are gearing up to do an on-demand assessment. Um, and all of our comprehensive high schools have students participating. And by comprehensive high schools, I mean Tuckwitz, um, West Valley, Hemet High. Um, those are the three schools that have students participating in this particular on-demand assessment. And then um, teachers will be scoring the on-demand assessment in Riverside on Friday, October 31st, and our res results should be received in November. And we have about 40 to 50 kids total, um, maybe a little bit more that are um, taking the on-demand as assessment on the 21st to see if they qualify for the uh, seal of multiliteracy. And then we have another, another you know, group of students who don't even have to take the on-demand 
because they met that requirement by passing the AP exam in a language other than English in their 11th grade year. So um, we are hoping to get more students to take the AP exam in a language other than English in earlier years so that um, this seal is already something that is in their back pocket so that when they're a senior, they don't have to stress about anything but just passing their English classes and scoring well on the state exam in English. Um, one of the goals we have, for example, for our Hemet Dual Language Academy would be that our eighth graders at some point take the AP exam in Spanish. And that way they have already met that requirement for the state seal of biliteracy and they will automatically receive it as a senior if they graduate with a 2.0 in their ELA classes and pass the um, state seal or the state uh, ELA test. So that's a lot of information, but um, it really does lead up to the seal of biliteracy and the seal of multiliteracy um, so that students are well prepared to be competitive in the workplace and at the university level as well. Ruby, can you go to the next slide? This last slide is a summary of all of the different programs that we have. We have the program participation. They get a certificate. Home language development gets a certificate. By literacy attainment recognition gets a certificate with a seal from the state. And then our state seal of biliteracy, that seal actually goes on their diploma and they get an orange cord and they're honored at their senior honors night. So these are our pathways. And if a student in grade uh, TK or kindergarten starts um, understanding the importance of their home language development, um, or they're participating in a program in middle school that develops a second language, or they have given evidence of a second language in that um, eighth grade year and fifth grade year, chances are they will continue to develop that other language and they will be biliterate by the time that they, um, that they graduate. So our last little piece of information, and then I'm going to open it up to questions, um, is a video. So if they haven't started a second language by sixth grade, no, it is not too late at all. They can um, be in a, and, and we have an admin from a middle school here, Selena, I'm looking at you. Um, they can take Spanish, correct? As, as a seventh and eighth grader, they can take Spanish in the middle schools as a seventh and eighth grader. I don't think Selena he can hear me, but um, yeah, so that is, a prime time, I would go to their middle school and talk to the counselor, say, how can I get my student into Spanish in their seventh and eighth grade? And that is uh, definitely enough time for them to get the um, program participation award. Anita, I hope I answered that question, but no, it's not too late. We are gonna play a video. This is um, highlighting some of our students last year that were in these programs. And um, it really goes from the elementary level all the way to our seniors and um, a shout out to Talkwitz High School who um, really highlighted their seniors and Diamond Valley. And I believe we had Acacia, HDLA was in this. And um, so a shout out to those schools who, and Rancho, Rancho Viejo had some students in the video as well. So please enjoy the video and then we will open it up to questions. And I am not hearing any audio on that. Yeah, I don't hear you. I hear your sound. Is your sound working on your computer, Ruby? She's working on it, she's getting it. You guys are an awesome team. Okay, let's see. And I love that my face is just there with my mouth open. Okay. Hello, my name is Janice Jones and I am the director. 
Hello, my name is Janice Jones, and I am the Director of Multilingual Programs at Hemet Unified. And today I would like to share about the State Seal of Biliteracy, an academic recognition received by high school seniors at graduation for completing requirements and passing examinations for two or more languages. This year, I want to point out the changes being made to highlight the multilingual progress and potential of elementary and middle school students. Power to communicate with not just one group of people, but various group of people with different backgrounds. Significa que tengo más oportunidades en más trabajos y conocer más personas. Um, it has allowed me to find a sense of identity. Um, it's allowed me to connect to my culture and my family. Uh, it means that I can help more people and talk to more people. So I feel like every culture has like their own experience, but I like really immerse myself in both. And so I share like a little bit of both of my identity too. What is so powerful is that students who have formerly been coined English learners, which right there is deficit-based language. Um, to me, when I hear the term English learner, I'm basically hearing that this is somebody who has something to gain um, rather than somebody who already has an asset. So we look at our students from the vantage point of they are all emerging bilinguals. Our students who speak Spanish proficiently, however, coming in at a kindergarten level, are now the students who are empowered to have that positive impact on their peers. Um, I think it's good that like younger kids are getting recognized too because learning a new language is really hard. And especially if you're little, like in elementary school and stuff. The seal of biliteracy recognizes me for my efforts and um, determination to learn a new language. I think it will motivate other students and children to also learn a new language and learn about different cultures as well. It's pretty cool that everyone started acknowledging that people speak different languages other than English, so I liked it, you know, I got excited when I was going to be here. Receiving the SEAL benefits students in many ways. Some benefits are very practical, such as college acceptances and career paths. Some other benefits are the family ties that are strengthened, the cultural ties that are strengthened, and understanding different cultures and different languages that enable them to enjoy travel more. Students can enjoy conversations they may have with extended family. Bilingualism and multilingualism has not only practical benefits, but it also has heartwarming benefits. So learning different languages will not only help me, but also help them and feel like they belong. I can help my mom um, translating. Because when you can speak both languages, you can help people who speak different languages. It could be any. For like when I'm talking just family members, because I have a lot of family members who just you know speak Spanish a lot, and um, talking to them like I just want to talk to them in Spanish instead of like having jumbled English words in there. My hope for this program is that we celebrate the voices of all of our emerging bilinguals from TK all the way through 12th grade. So historically, Hemet Unified has celebrated our seniors with the State Seal of Biliteracy, but we'd like to expand that, and that's what we're doing this year. We're expanding our biliteracy pathways to our elementary students as well as our middle school students. And there's three pathways that we are incorporating into our organization. The first one is the biliteracy program participation. The second one is the home language development recognition and the third one is the biliteracy attainment proficiency pathway and these three pathways really build so that the culminating recognition is the state seal of biliteracy in their senior year. Yeah uh, because you know learning another language like French or like Japanese or something you could like move there and like know the language and, and like appreciate it like better because you'd be able to like, communicate with people. Je pense que c'est important uh, à tout le monde de comprendre uh, et apprendre le nouveau langue parce que um, ça aide à communiquer avec les autres. Notre monde actuellement est vraiment vaste et c'est important uh, à tout le monde de uh, uh, d'être ensemble pour changer uh, uh, tout le monde.
nunca dar su vencido, nunca dudar en ti mismo, creer que no puedes lograr las cosas y recordar que siempre tienes que dar todo. Échale ganas porque eso sí es algo que alguien sí, me imagino que mucha gente como quería la oportunidad de hacer eso, pero no todos pueden hacer eso. We want to make sure that all voices of our students are heard and elevated and celebrated. And this is one way that we can really celebrate those students who are learning a second or third or fourth language, those students who are learning English as an additional language, or those students that are learning Spanish or French as an additional language. We want to celebrate the diversity in our community, and language is a wonderful way to do that. My name is Ramon Turin, and I'm proud to be bilingual. My name is Hilary Saldana, and I'm proud to be bilingual. Hola, mi nombre es Blanca Méndez y soy orgullosa de ser bilingüe. Hola, mi nombre es Mili Maqueda y soy orgullosa de ser bilingüe. Hola, mi nombre es Jaime Funes y soy orgullosa de ser bilingüe. Hola, me llamo Ana Molina y estoy orgullosa de ser bilingüe. My name is Ariana Nibos and I'm proud to be a bilingüe student. Mi nombre es Alondra y soy orgullosa de ser bilingüe. Mi nombre es Anjelija y soy muy bien de ser bilingüe. Yo me llamo Cynthia y soy fiel de bilingüe. Thank you, Ruby. I, it never fails to give me absolute chills every time I see our students doing um, great things. And to be able to think and speak and communicate in more than one language is truly a superpower. So um, I love that video. I love our kids. And I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I do. So now is time for um, questions and answers. And I have a question in the chat. It says, my child has been a dual language school, at a dual language school from kindergarten to fourth grade. He is now at Hamilton fifth grade, but they do not offer Spanish in fifth grade. Is there somewhere he can take classes so he doesn't lose it before middle school seventh grade? Um, Michelle, um, I would like to give you my email address and um, I'd like for you to send me your contact information and I will contact you tomorrow and we can talk a little bit about that one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Thank you for that question. Are there any other questions? What are the requirements for middle school? Um, the requirements for middle school, let's go back to um, the biliteracy pathway or bi biliteracy attainment recognition. So these are the requirements for students to receive the biliteracy attainment recognition in eighth grade for this particular pathway. For home language, all they have to do is have their parent um, respond to the survey and that should be going out in the next month or so and um, verify that they are developing their home language at home. And then the first one, all they have to do is be enrolled in a Spanish class in eighth grade for them to receive the program participation. I hope that that answered your question. Any other questions anyone may have? Does Hemet School District offer sign language and does it qualify for this program? It does qualify for this program and I believe the only school that offers it is Talkwoods High School. 